Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. I have a really quick one for you, but I think it's an important video. EVgo has recently been rolling out their auto charge program. We've heard of plug and charge capable for cars like the Bolt. Yes, even old Bolts are capable for this and even surprisingly Tesla's with the CCS adapter. So I'm going to talk a little bit about auto charge versus plug and charge. And then of course, I'm going to sign up my Tesla for auto charge. We're going to plug it in and show you just how easy it is, hopefully, to just plug in the charger and walk away. That's the goal. You guys may have heard me talk about something called ISO 15118 over time. If you don't subscribe to the Out of Spec podcast, highly recommend that you do because we go in depth on all these nerdy topics. There's so much stuff going on in the EV charging world right now. Tesla is talking about unlocking their connector. Actually, they have for everyone to use. Who knows what the reality of that will actually be. But one thing I wanted to bring up was EVgo's sort of solutions for all of this right now. EVgo offers, of course, CCS charging, also Chatamo charging on their city chargers, which are roughly about 100, 150 kilowatts or so, enough to max out a lead for any other Chatamo vehicle. And they also offer Tesla connectors, but it's a little bit different than Tesla unlocking their connector. What EVgo has done with those, and this is not a site that has it, is actually just hook up the Tesla connector to a bit, pretty much a Chatamo adapter. You're limited to 125 amp at pack voltage, anywhere between 35 and 50 kilowatt, depending on your Tesla. And like, okay, it's not that fast. So in comes the CCS adapter. And before I even tell you about the CCS adapter, there is, again, back to that ISO 15118 conversation. So plug and charge is something we've been asking for for a long time. ISO 15118 is essentially a standard that allows for communication and payment processing through encrypted services over the CCS connection. And the way that works is you hook your car up with an app. Let's say you have Volkswagen ID4 hooked up with Electrify America. Hopefully if it's on the newest software, you can just roll up plug in and go. I'm trying to think of other cars that do it. Tycon has it, e-tron GT has it. Uh, what else has plug-in charge? I don't know, other cars. Comment below with what you know has plug-in charge working right now. EVgo decided to take a different route than Electrify America. I would say broad industry standard and they created their own auto charge concept. And the way this works is actually using the in-car MAC address to communicate signals. Now, if you want a super nerdy in-depth dive as to the actual activation communication and protocol, head to the Out of Spec podcast. We'll have episodes breaking down the two different plug and charge standards that are going on. But what's kind of cool is Tesla supports EVgo's new auto charge function, which means in the EVgo app, I can load up my Tesla and through the CCS adapter only, not through the built-in Chatamo adapter Tesla things that EVgo's have on them, I should be able to, by the end of setting this up, walk up to an EVgo station with my CCS adapter, plug it into the car, plug the, the uh, charger into the connector, and walk away. Have the supercharger experience, but at EVgo. So we're gonna set it up, we're gonna try it out, see how quickly it works. Of course, I'm gonna let you know how to set this up on your own car. Well, you join me over at a Delta 350 kilowatt EVgo station. The reason I chose these is actually on the screen, it says a maximum output of 540 amps. We've seen this CCS adapter do over 600 amps on an EA Signet station. It was a rare anomaly, and we have a whole podcast on that topic as well. So we know this can output the full 250 kilowatt plus. I think we saw over 260 kilowatts on a pretty much identical Tesla Model S Plaid to the one that I've brought along here today. So I'm at about 15% state of charge. I've been preconditioning the car to a nearby supercharger. That's one thing I'd love to see Tesla implement into their system, especially now as they seem to be going deeper into this collaboration with EVgo. Again, having the Tesla connectors, activating auto charge with their CCS adapter. I'd love to have the cars preconditioned to this charger here. But the, I haven't set it up yet, so let's get into that. So here in my EVgo app, you can see I have my car. It's capable of Tesla fast charging and level two charging. So I'm going to request to enroll. Do you have a CCS Combo One adapter? That's this right here. And this is the official Tesla one, of course. Yes, I have one. Now, 
It says initiate a charge with the app to complete your enrollment. So this is a one-time setup. So to initiate a fast charge at an EVgo station, Auto Charge Plus is not available at level two stations. And then basically we just select a charger, plug in the CCS connector, we'll then stop that charging session and then try it again by plugging in. So it's really a one and done. So we're here at uh, closest charging station. I don't even know where we are. Hold on, let me put filters on. We are at CCS, boom, and we should be right here. If it can load in time, thinking, why is it not going? CCS, Chatamo. All right, apply. There we go, boom. We are at Rodolfo. Of course, every EVgo charger is actually named. Although, unfortunately, I heard, because I was just doing a podcast with some of the EVgo guys, and I heard that the Kyle charger is like a charger that has like a two rating on plug share and is offline and garbage. And so if any EVgo people are watching this, we need a Kyle that's like a juicy 350 kilowatt one or an experimental higher power one. Let's, let's make that happen. So I'm going to go over here to Rodolfo, last used seven hours ago, and I'm going to somehow select him to plug in which I don't actually know how to use the app. There we go, please wait before plugging in. So is this the vehicle you wish to enroll in Auto Charge Plus? So I'm actually gonna plug in, wait, this says enroll and start charging, please wait before plugging in. Yes, great, plug the CCS combo connector within 60 seconds. All right, let's go quick here. Boom. Plugging, boom. Tesla, unlock. Thank you. In we go. So with the CCS adapter, I believe you actually have to connect it first and then plug it into the car. We're connecting to our vehicle. Hopefully all is good. Maybe it takes a little while to do communications, of course, because it's the first time we're plugging in. The car says starting to charge. The charger says connecting, contactors are going, so I think we're good. Starting to charge, contactors, big contactor went. Connection successful, nice. And juicy. And the best part about EVgo, honestly, and we'll see if the plug and charge thing worked, this is the best. I can come over here and get all the nerd stuff. So here we go, let's see what kind of amperage we can pull here. So we're at 400 volts. Model S Plan is a relatively high pack voltage. Uh, again, we're only at about 14% state of charge. Look at this, 425 amps right now. Battery pack was probably a bit cold. I didn't, didn't precondition it for too long, but it is ramping up. I'm gonna let this go and I'll let you know what we peak at, but it should be, oh, it's it's going. We're, we're ramping, take a look at this. Come on in here. 470 amps, are we gonna see the full 500? Will it boost above 500? You can see it says max 540. Look at this, over 500 amps, baby. Hell yeah, no way. We are maxing this thing out. 225 kilowatts, of course. Um, the thing is, you can only go up to 540 amps on this unit at this pack voltage, 225 kilowatts. But as the state of charge increases, we actually should see the full 250 out of this as we gain some pack voltage. But holy crap, 538 amps at 420 volts. That's worth some celebration in my opinion. So if you go to an EVgo Delta unit, you're gonna get all the juice. That's freaking awesome. So take a look here. You can see we got a notification that says we have elected to enroll in auto charge and our vehicle is registered. And so we're all good to go. I really like that they text you that. And I love that we're still just sitting pegged up here at 540 amps. That is just epic. This whole CCS 500 amp limitation, I think is becoming a thing of the past. I think we're going to see some real big boy chargers happening soon. A really spicy leaf pulled up. Just absolutely awesome vehicle. You guys know I have one of those. Pretty much the same spec, actually. Uh, his is not dented, but he does have the pinstripe. So, okay, fair enough either way. Man, Model S looks good charging over here, no question. Yeah, let's go try the uh, plug and charge, auto charge function now that we're all plugged in. But I want to see, 
what the maximum charging power we'll see here on Plaid. 540 amps as pack voltage comes up. I wonder if we'll see 250 or somewhere in that high 230 region. So now that we've initiated everything, we saw a peak of about 231, 232 kilowatts at about 37% state of charge. We dipped down to 500 amps from 540 or so. Still, I just love that we're past these CCS limitations and we're getting some big boy juicy charging numbers away from the supercharger network. Again, when the cars are really dead to get 250 kilowatts, you need a ton of amperage. So superchargers will go 680 plus amps and sometimes and that's the thing I like about the Tesla charging standard that they've proposed, whether or not anyone will actually ever adopt or use it. Uh, I like that there's no current limitation. Okay, let's go simulate what happens if we just roll up to an EV go station now, now that the car is fully hooked up to the network. Again, the charger's not pre-activated or anything. This is just a welcome screen. What I'm gonna do is take the CCS adapter, plug it in to the cable, plug it in, to the car and I'm not going to touch anything. Nothing's been pre-activated. It's communicating. It says payment has been authorized. Holy crap. You guys know how long ISO 15118 takes for payment communication. That was instant. That's like supercharger instant. And then of course it has to do CCS communications. Contactors are already clicking. Basically what's happening is the car saying, here's my pack voltage. Charger, you need to meet it. Here's how much current I want. Charger, please give me whatever you can course because the car is asking for as much as the charger can give it and there we go connection successful boom plug and charge that's the supercharger experience on the public networks we're already over 200 kilowatts uh crazy look at this 236 kilowatts 540 amps again at 40 percent so maybe it, it dipped down to 500 amps i don't know why maybe a temperature limitation or something no we're walking our way back down it's what the car wants the car is derating um so it probably just pulled pack voltage up and then we're sitting at around 500 amps with 220 kilowatts, just insanely fast charging here. Plug and charge on EVgo. Uh, yeah, call me impressed, I like it. So let me know what you guys think. Do you wanna learn more about auto charge versus ISO 15118? Of course, this is still using parts of ISO 15118 because that's a big standard, but the actual payment processing is going through a different node, if you will. Uh, subscribe to the Out of Spec podcast if you're curious about more. But I had to come and try it out and just thrilled. So you might see me at EVgo Chargers more with a Tesla. Could be interesting. Thanks so much for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. As always, really appreciate your viewership. See you on another one soon. Bye-bye.